Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. This past summer, I had the opportunity to join Able Bodies Club with Chris Shepard. He started the club this summer as a way to teach multiple kids how to do robotics. We, we started out by using a simple machine just to get our feet in the water. We used Lego building blocks because it was, it was an easy material to use and it was an easy way to learn how to do robotics. The programming software that was through Lego was a simple process of just learning of what each sensor did, what each motor did. I began to build up from a small, so it's from a small robot, a, a rover, to a walking lizard, and then I progressed to this as my senior project. My name is Tyler Westmoreland, and I am here to tell you about my about my blimp here. For my research, I research I re research NASA's web database of space applications for, for their multiple space vehicles or space craft. I researched what materials they use, I researched where they would use them, and why they would use them. I researched this because I have a, a fond interest of, of astrophysics. So, this, so I related my blimp into this research to find a way to see if I can formulate a way to make a blimp space applicable. My research through NASA, I was able to find multiple sources in the database of what of what materials they use. Some of those materials are very, very advanced. One of them is called an aerogel. An aerogel is a material that's half gel, half solid. The solid portion, the gel at first is is a gel is formed. After, after it's cooled somewhat, the inside is still liquidy. Liquid CO2 is inserted into the gel to make it a solid. This CO2 exerts out of, the, out of the gel and makes it a complete solid. When you rub your hand over the gel, it feels like a solid. It does not feel like a solid. There are little tiny microscopic holes that are inside of it to keep air from going out, which makes it a great insulator and a poor conductor which is why NASA would use it in their space shuttle. Another material I found that was very interesting was piezoelectric. This material is a metal that works like a motor, it can, but it's also a smart motor. It reacts to its environment without human interaction. They use it on the satellites so that if anything goes wrong, they can use that material to make sure that nothing goes wrong. They, they send out a signal to that material and say this needs fixed and the, and the material could fix it or would move this into that position. Now, for the blimp, how it works is that there are basic forces that it must overcome. Those basic forces include thrust, drag, gravity, and lift. Lift is, is created when there's a, air is more like a, air is considered a fluid. Lift is generated by the fans spinning around and moving the fluid. The fluid pushes the blimp up and makes it fly. Drag <coughs> will push down on it as will gravity. Gravity is, is the weight of the blimp. That's it. Drag is the air resistance. Thrust and lift have to either equal or be greater in order for the craft to get off the ground. If it's equal, it will sit, it will just float. If it's greater, it will go up. If it's less, it will sink. On the, on the blimp itself, it is created out of these bricks that, that are in, these, in a straight line that are reinforced with multiple pegs and multiple, and multiple strings. The pegs, the pegs are inserted on the sides and they are connected. There are also pegs on the outside where you connect with multiple fittings to make sure that it, that does not come out. Bending will be, will be okay on the blimp as long as it does not break. Bending good, breaking bad. If it breaks, it will fall apart. For the, I have multiple sensors on the blimp. Well, yeah. The first sensor that is used as a failsafe. 
A fail-safe is that if something goes wrong, if I lose connection or if the blimp just starts going haywire, I will be able to, well, the blimp will be able to come back down. The sensor that's used is called an ultrasonic sensor. That sonic, the sensor, shoots out sonar waves and, you, and it works like a radar. It bounces off and comes back to the sensor with feedback or distance. I, we program the robot so that when it's, if I lose sig signal, the robot will go down, the fans will, the fans will move up, and the robot will go down until it has reached a certain, certain distance, which is about a foot off the ground, and it will reverse and slow its descent until it makes a smooth landing. Another sensor I have on that is built inside of a motor. The motor is a servo motor, which means I can control how much power, how much, how much angle I want, and, and how many rotations. I can control any of that amount. The servo motor has a built-in sensor called a rotation sensor. That senses its degree angle or how many rotations. That, sen that sensor I use for the fan is axle. The axle will make the fans go up if I want to go up, or down if I want to go down, or if it just stays straight. I control it with my, with my controller, and that it has a radio on it, and so does the blimp also has a radio on it. One is a transmitter, one is a receiver. The transmitter is on my controller, and the receiver is on the blimp. It is encoded in, in the language so that when I go full, if I with my joystick, if I go full forward, it sends out a number. That number is then decoded and goes into the program and sees what it needs to do. For example, for full forward, the number is 32. For 32, that means that the blimp is going to go forward. All, both of them, both fans are going to go forward. Neither of them are going to go backwards. Neither of them are going to go. Neither of them are going to not go. If I go back, it will all will reverse. If I go to the left, one will go, one will go forward, one will go backwards. Same with the right. One will go forward, one will go backwards. Now, for, one, for the controller, it had to be synchronized in that when I send the signal, there had to be a minimal amount of lag in case anything happens, and I had to have a quick change in its direction. The first thing we used was Bluetooth. Bluetooth created too much lag. It was, just, it was still fast in sending the signal, but it kept piling up, and then it would start crashing. So we were forced to buy an XB, and that is the little radio that I previously mentioned. The XB sends out radio waves to one cent the transmitter sends the radio waves, and the receiver receives it and sends it back to the computer. The computer on the blimp is, the, is a box on the bottom of the blimp, and it has, it has buttons on it. The orange button turns it on, and there are arrows, and then the bottom gray button either cancels or turns it off. The computer the computer is where all the programming is. All the programming goes into that computer, so that is what is being programmed. The blimp itself, the structure does nothing except hold it together. The, 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 the motors on it, I have one, I have two types. One is servo, as I previously mentioned, and another one's a DC. The DC motor, I can only control how much power is given to that given to that motor. I control that with another sensor I have on there called an IR link sensor. That sensor receives the signal from the from the XB and it sends out a signal to the receiver for the DC motors. The receiver then sends out the signal to the batteries and the batteries then send out how much electricity to both to both motors. The motors how, how much electricity is how fast the motors will go, or if it will go reverse. Now I'll show you my short video here. Oh, there we go. Excellent.